What's going on, everybody? It is Thursday, May 3rd, and we have just an exceptional main slate to talk about where we might only have three games when all is said and done. Uh, Jake, how excited are you to play this just awesome main slate tonight? Yeah, I'm just super pumped to uh, get this four slash three game slate in. Um, it looks like it. Man, I thought it was going to be much better when I was looking last night. I thought Garrett Richards was pitching, and we'd maybe have three good pitchers to choose from. But uh, no, no, yeah, it's it's not great. It's um, not great. So we'll we'll try to uh, stumble our way through it, I guess, and maybe make some money along the way. I'm probably going to look at losing it for today. It seems like a more likely scenario. Yeah, the, these slates, when there's three games, it's kind of a toss-up. If there's four, I think it's a little bit better. There's also some hitting that I like in the Twins-White Sox game. So if that game clears up, then it's a little bit better. So just going to have to keep an eye on it, I guess. Yeah, I wrote the Twins up as a uh, spotlight stack. So, you know, might have to rewrite that one. <laughs> we'll get into that when we get when we get into that. First game up, Rangers and Red Sox. Rangers, 4.2 run implied total. Red Sox, 5. Uh, it's a 59% chance to win for the Red Sox. Mike Miner going for Texas. David Price going for Boston. Um, so Price is a guy that I'm going to be looking at a lot on FanDuel. He's probably my my favorite uh, pitcher from a FanDuel perspective. He's also going to be incredibly popular, I would imagine. Um, on DK... Like, I, I can't be too picky because there's not enough options. Um, I'd say that Price is probably my favorite play on DraftKings as well. Um, how much, David, like, how much have you been looking at Price? Yeah, he's he's my favorite play yeah. on this main slate. Like, um, I, I don't really think it's that close. He's $1,300 or $1,500 cheaper than Manaya, And, I mean, I, I really like Manaya as a pitcher. But he's obviously got a, a much tougher matchup. Yeah. The only bad part about this matchup for Price is the weather. So I think he's going to be mega, mega chalk on DK. But it's it's a tough fade. Like, you're mostly scared of Rangers lefties. And then Price looking much better this year going up against some lefties. And these guys like Chirinos... Profar, Rua, these guys will all strike out a bunch. So, um, yeah, there's just nothing not to like outside of the weather, but I'm also not even that concerned. Yeah, it's... I mean, his ownership is going to be insane. Like, it'll be high on FanDuel. It's going to be ridiculous on DraftKings. Yeah, and... So, here's the thing. Like, if it's, like, 60%, 50%, 60%, like... Now you got to get to the point where, on on DraftKings, where you have to start thinking about a fade, just because like he he's not like an elite pitcher anymore. He could like in theory blow up. Yeah. I don't think he's going to, but if you're fading seventy percent chalk, then that's usually a good play when it's a pitcher. It's baseball; things can go wrong. A guy can make an error, and he can have one blow up inning and your a ranger stack ends up winning everything so you just have to think about that ownership on these short slates i guess it's gonna be it's gonna be a really interesting like a game theory type play um to get to this game i'm trying to take a look at how good the rangers are versus lefties I don't have well they don't have there's no beltre and no andrews and those are like two of their best hitters against um against lefties so those numbers might even be a lot better than what they actually are now. Yeah, they're ninth in hard contact against lefties, yeah. but I would hazard a guess that you know Beltre makes up a decent portion of that as a you know, power right-handed hitter. And Andrews has shown some power over the last year or so. Like, yeah, I would expect good. him to square up lefties more than righties. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting game. Um, what do you think about for bats? I think the Red Sox look absolutely exceptional here this the whole red sox team whether that's price or the hitters are going to be 
in my opinion, like the clear chalky chalk chalk of the night. Yeah, this is where I think I can get a little bit different. Um, and I'm not saying to fully fade the Red Sox. I might do it um, because of it's it's such a short slate, and hitters are even more variant than pitchers. Yeah. So Miner has been pretty good. He's missed some bats, 12.3% swinging strike rate. Um, righties are hitting him hard, just when you look at the hard contact on fan graphs against him. Um, and then the Red Sox are pretty bad as a team against lefties, like relative to the league. So they're ninth. They have the ninth highest K percentage, uh, lowest on base percentage, and second lowest hard hit rate against lefties. I think didn't we talk about that the other day? Mm-hmm. Like we did. So it's it's possible they don't go off here. Um, I actually don't think they do go off, at least not against minor. So fifty three hundred dollars for minor. I'm at least considering it and hoping he just sort of survives. Wow. And that the Red Sox don't go off. Um, it's. It's not a fun play, but with no Garrett Richards, um, like you, you got to make a stand somewhere. And I think mine's going to be, I'm not going to be high on the Red Sox bats. Even if I don't have, end up with minor, I'll probably just have one Red Sox bat. It's going to be either Mookie Betts, Hanley Ramirez, or J.D. Martinez. Yeah, J.D. made the spotlight hitters today, but it could have easily been Betts. Uh, yeah. I just felt like it was a little bit easier to take the salary haircut, $400 cheaper on DK, $200 cheaper on FanDuel. Um, I'd be in, I, I'm, I'm really high on the Red Sox, but I'm generally really high on stuff like that. I'll have a bunch of them, obviously. Uh, Betts, Ramirez, Martinez, Bogarts, Eduardo Nunez, Ben Benintendi, like I'm in for most of that. If I were on DK, you know, Christian Vasquez, if I needed to fill my catcher spot, like I think that'd be an interesting spot for him. Um, I'm gonna end. I'm, I'm I'm betting on the Red Sox tonight. I don't mean that literally, but I mean that I guess half literally, <laughs> betting on them in DFS. You're skill gaming on them, right? Y- yes, you're, I'm skill. You're skill gaming. I, yeah, I, I mean, just I, I don't I don't not worried about Mike Miner. No, I, I wouldn't be like if you like the Red Sox and you, you think they're gonna be the top stack, which they they could be. I think I'd prefer one stack, maybe two ahead of it, ahead of them. So if they're going to be the, the chalkiest stack, then I'll just fade and hope that Mike Miner misses a few bats and only gives up two, three runs instead of giving up uh, the blow-up inning and giving up six in two innings. So I think he's capable of limiting this Red Sox team. So I'll, I'll take my chances on that. Okay. Uh, anything from the Rangers side of it all? The only guy I have listed is Chirinos. Um, I don't know a ton about Renato Nunez. Um, cheap? Not, yeah, he's he's cheap. Like, this Rangers stack is super cheap if you want to go with Manaya and uh, I don't even know who the second picture you go with. Because um, <laughs> uh, there just isn't much after Manaya and Price. But um, so maybe this is a FanDuel night. You choose between Price and uh, Sean Manaya. Uh, but Torino's is the only guy that I have listed that I'm somewhat interested in against Price. I'd be okay with Delano De Shields. That's about it. Um, and Renato Nunez on FanDuel is minimum salary. So basically, I'm I'm interested in anybody on minimum salary usually, especially if they're hitting sixth, like could be a decent spot for someone at that minimum mm-hmm. point yeah um but the rangers aren't really like the side that i'm looking for especially without you know two of their legitimate starters so it's all red Sox for me i don't blame you at all yeah i won't be in the minority <laughs> all righty white Sox and twins this one will be i don't know we could get away with not talking about it, and I think we'd be fine. Uh, 4.4 run implied total for both teams. It's a 50-50 game. Ronaldo Lopez going for Chicago. Jake Odorizzi going for Minnesota. As of right now, it looks like heavy, heavy rain from 7 o'clock until 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, this one's going to be tricky to get in, I think. I can't imagine wanting to use Lopez or Odorizzi because of the weather. Uh, the only 
I would want to only take a shot at bats here. Mm-hmm. Um, not to mention uh, Ronaldo Lopez and Jake Odorizzi are, are not good. So yeah. I really don't want to have a not good pitcher with a chance of rain. Um, I love the Twins from bat perspective today. I don't know how much I'm going to really be able to commit to them until we see the weather uh, change a little bit, or hopefully see it change a little bit, because right now that whole wheelhouse of the game looks like it's going to be a problem. Yeah, that's that's a, the same thing I'm seeing right now, too. So if this somehow does play, then uh, I like a bunch of the White Sox bats, Moncada, Abreu, Yomer Sanchez, yeah. um, really the top five for the White Sox, but I love those top three. Um so I, I would full stack against Odorizzi, like no problems with that. He's got a 16% K rate, 37% hard contact, and 590 XFIP against lefties. And he's given up seven home runs this year. So he has not fixed the home run problems. Um, like, I don't think he's that great. I was wrong in him a few weeks ago. I think I liked him a little bit. Um, but he's not shown me really anything over his last few starts. And then Lopez is just sort of average, is what I have. Um, nothing special for him. 7,600. Like, you could probably make a case for actually either one of these pitchers if the weather was going to be okay. But right now, I have no interest in either one. Agreed. Just not not for the fact that they're good. Just because they're there and at least they've pitched in the majors for a while. <laughs> uh, but the Twins bats... I love Dozier leading off, and then Maurer and Kepler. I think I like one, two, three for both teams. So that's where I'm going to be at if the weather clears up. On DK, I think I like one to nine for the Twins. I would happily really? take Jason Castro for 2100. Um, you know, I- ignoring weather, obviously. Um, yeah. I love Dozier, Maurer, and Kepler. That top three looks really nice. I think Eddie Rosario looks really good. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with Logan Morrison. Minnesota fourth in baseball and hard hit percentage uh, versus righties. And it's not like Ronaldo Lopez is bringing out the good stuff. So the Twins are a stack that I'm definitely going to be on if I think there's any chance of this game happening. Um, it'll be interesting come 6 o'clock. We'll probably know more. It might be postponed by that point. Um, it Honestly, it might be postponed by the time this podcast comes out. That's, <laughs> that's very like, true. Uh, so. And if it is... Just skip this section. <laughs> yeah. Um, White Sox bats, I'm with you there on those top four. Moncada, Sanchez, Abreu, Delmonico all have really nice price points, uh, particularly on DraftKings. Uh, one guy you didn't mention, and I was a little surprised, uh, Wellington Castillo, only 3000 mm. for a catcher option on DK. I thought that he would go well in a White Sox stack. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just a guy with power. I prefer him against lefties, but Odorizzi... Like, he doesn't have true splits just yet this year, but um, he's always been a neutral splits guy, so I don't know if he's changed up his pitch pitch mix a ton or what, but Castillo can hit righties as well. So if you're stacking the White Sox and you need your catch position filled out, then, yeah, Wellington Castillo for 3,000 is fine. Okay, yeah. We're on the same page there. Um, anything else to touch on on this game? I don't think so. Just sort of pay attention to the weather, people. Yeah. Angels and Orioles. Angels, uh, that can't be right. Yeah, I guess it is right. Uh, 4.9 run implied total. Did I not refresh this? Nope, I didn't. 4.4 run implied total. Orioles 3.6. It's a 59% chance to win for the Angels. I assume it's Jaime Barria. Uh, going for the Angels, Chris Tillman going for Baltimore. Um, you know, I don't really love the pitching here, but the Orioles implied total, if this shakes out like it, like I have it in here right now, it kind of makes Barria be in play, particularly at 4,000 on DK in what could be a three-game slate. Is he going to be yeah. like way more popular than it seems tonight? I, I think he's probably going to be pretty popular on DK. Yeah. So... Like, I thought this slate was going to be a bunch better. I thought it was Garrett Richards. He was listed yesterday when I was looking at this slate. And I talked about him on the night shift about how good of a bounce back spot this would be. But Baria looks okay. Or Baria. Baria. 
he looks okay. He's four thousand and a favorite against a team with a did you say three point six run total? Uh, yes, I have it at three point six. There's not a total out for that game yet. Let me double check it right now. Okay. Um, well, he's so he's going to be eight as a total, which seemed pretty reasonable. Yeah, and what whatever it is, if it's over four, even like yeah, no total yet. He's gonna he's gonna get some some steam. He's pitched. Um, 77 and 71 pitches in his two starts, which, you know, 77 in his last start, which was like two weeks ago. Um, I'm sorry. No, that wasn't a start, was it? Did he start that game or was the relief appearance? Um, Let's check. Oh, no, he, he did, only, he did he start started it. started two games, yeah. Yeah, so he – yeah, okay. So he started both games, 71, 77 pitches. Uh, but he only went two innings in the game. He pitched 77 pitches. That's brutal. So, he only that's gave not... up two earned, though, which is yeah, that that's seems... hard to do. Five hits, a walk. Five hits in a walk, and he only gave up two runs like in two innings. That's You're getting out of trouble. Was that the, was that the Brandon Belt 21 pitch at bat game? Let's find out. Because I'm seeing 57. Is that? Man. Okay. Anyways, it doesn't Belt matter. played. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you got to have some interest in a 4K pitcher that's favored. He might throw 80 pitches. That's perfectly fine if he goes five innings. Um, he went five innings, 71 pitches against the Rangers on April 11th. I could certainly see a, a similar start. And you really just need, like, 12 points out of him because outside of Manaya and Price, and then I have some interest in Minor. I mean, who else are you going to play on DK at least? So you can take a 4K pitcher, hope he goes five, gets a win, and um, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. We know how um, free swinging the Orioles are, yeah. so it makes sense. Uh, great call on the Brandon Belt 21 pitch at bat game. You're absolutely right. Well, that's the only thing I could think of because I'm seeing. 77 pitches, 57 strikes. So, like, whatever, he gets 15 foul balls in that at bat, and then... Yeah, you, you nailed it. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Um, so, if I've got the line in at 8 right now. If it comes in at 8 and this line holds, then I think Barria looks like an okay second option on DK in a short slate. If that line goes higher than 8, if it gets to 9... Um, then I really, really like an angel stack. Uh, right I, now, I, I just like an angel stack. If that line goes to nine or higher, then I like I do backflips for the angels. Oh, I love love an angel stack. Yeah, Tillman. He, Tillman keeps surviving. Um, so bad. He's he's awful. Fifty percent hard contact against lefties. Uh, he's been actually okay against righties. Okay for him. Um, last year he was getting crushed by both but How is you know he in whatever the league? i don't know uh he had he survived against houston he survived against another really good team at the start of the year and they're just kind of riding it out with him seeing if he can figure it out i'm guessing um so whatever he's really really bad against lefties like so otani um if my boy luis valbuena is in the lineup that would be awesome those are two guys i'm looking to play and then really like one through nine for the angels i don't really care that these guys are righties i think tillman is awful you got trout for almost 6k on dk but he'll probably be in my lineup he's a spotlight uh, hitter tonight he should be um upton for 4600 kinsler for 3700 otani is probably my favorite play on the entire slate um he's gonna be popular but whatever um, I'm going to try to get as many angels in as I can. Um, no respect for Tillman. So, no. Um, I'm at I couldn't be more, stuff. We couldn't be on the same page even more. Like, yeah. Especially with not having to pay up for any pitchers, there's enough salary left over to get to the angels' bats. For sure. It's not like you're paying you know, 14000 for Max Scherzer or something tonight on a three-game, what ends up being a three-game slate. So. Love Kinsler, Trout, Upton, Pujols, Otani, and Cole Calhoun. Um, like I said, Trout is a 
as a spotlight hitter today. Sometimes you just need to pay up, and Trout against Chris Tillman is one of those matchups. Um, I like the Angels quite a bit here. You know, I don't have much of a problem having some Orioles. Uh, you know, Jace Peterson, I think, looks okay. Nice value play. Um, Pedro Alvarez, if he's hitting fifth, you know, lefty bat, relatively cheap, decent chance for a dong. Um, you know, I can get to a little bit of Orioles. It's going to be interesting to see where this line shakes out. I don't love their implied total. 3.6 is pretty low for the slate, so I wouldn't have a ton of Orioles. They'd be my lowest team for sure. Uh, but I can see a, a, a few little stacks that have a glimmer of hope. Yeah, I mean, if if a 4K pitcher is going to be super chalk, then you take hitters against him, you're going to be really different in tournaments. So yeah. Alvarez, Machado, and then Jace Peterson, if he's batting second, I think, would be the guys I'd look at. I'm probably more likely to, to play Barria, fade the Red Sox, and then go with an Angels full stack. Uh, just hope that they get him runs early, and then he just cruises to four or five innings and gets me double-digit points. So that's really what you're hoping for with Barria. Yep, exactly. Last game, Mariners and A's. Uh, Mariners, four-run implied total. A's, 4.3. It's a 53% chance to win for the A's. Wade LeBlanc going for Seattle. Sean Manaya going for Oakland. Uh, I guess I'd be more likely to want to have LeBlanc tonight just because of the price. But you, like, if you're max entering anything on FanDuel or DK, you'll end up with, I don't know, 15 to 20% of Manaya like, by default. Even though I don't think that he looks like a good value on a dollar per dollar basis. Yeah. Uh, Do you like him tonight? So I, I don't like LeBlanc. I, I think I prefer Minor or Baria. Okay. Um, I wonder if people will be on LeBlanc. I don't think he's going to go very long in this game, though. He just went. He's the the farthest he's gone is four and two thirds in a relief appearance. So, I think five innings max for him, yeah. which is kind of what we're hoping for with Baria, so it makes sense as a pivot if you want to go there, but uh, Oakland is really, really good against lefties. They have been all season, uh, one of the highest hard hit percentages. Um, they're not striking out a ton, um, so I actually love the Oakland bats. Uh, Jed Lowry, Chad Pinder, Chris Davis, Chapman, um, and then I like to put in Matt Olson if I'm stacking them, if I can just because if they knock out the lefty early, they're probably going to get a righty at some point. Yeah. Um, and Olsen has power against both sides. So I like the full Oakland stack as well. I think A's and Angels is where I'm going to be at tonight. Um, that's And then probably fading the Red Sox. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I don't love the A's prices as much. I would like – I want to like them more, and I'll obviously have them. I'm going to have – if this is a three-game slate, like I'm going to have everybody – in, in yeah. some amount. Um, Marcus Semien was really close to being a spotlight hitter for me. I ultimately went with Trout. I think that he's in a, a really nice spot at the top of the order against LeBlanc. Um, what's the Mariners' bullpen look like? Uh, I can pull it up really quick. Uh, I'm going to beat you to it. At least I hope I do. I've got it bookmark, bookmarked, so. I'm on it already. See. The uh, middle of the pack. And what, what's that? Uh, just looking at XFIP quick XFIP, just to get an yeah. idea how good they are. They're 12th. They have, um, they have a good whip, too. Yeah. I was so. trying to think, like, you know, if LeBlanc is out in four innings and the Mariners have the second-best bullpen, that's a little bit different than if they had the 28th-best bullpen. So right now it doesn't really lead me any further directions. Right. I wish it would have. <laughs> but LeBlanc, is, he's part of their bullpen. Like, he he's not True. a starter. That's so. a good point. That's a good point. I mean, maybe – Maybe they bring in one of their bad relievers if he gets knocked up, or they don't. They don't bring in his their best relievers after him. Well, so. he's got a 471 xFIP on the season in relief, which is significantly higher than the team's average. So, actually, with LeBlanc out of the bullpen, they're probably like eighth or ninth. Mm -hmm. So, if he really does only go four innings, that might be better for. Seattle than worse. Could be. Like the I think the Mariners bullpen is probably like a top eight bullpen 
when yeah. LeBlanc isn't an option. So something like it's just one of those weird paths where the A's might not be as good of a stack because oddly enough they've removed the the crappiest part of their bullpen. Yeah. <laughs> Some sort of reverse logic. I, I do like the A's, though. Semien and Pinder, for sure. Um, and then Chris Davis, like, always a chance to go and hit a dong. Matt Chapman, for sure. I'll have Olsen in, in stacks. I don't mind there, although I really hate the price, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, like, I'm fine with some A's. I don't really want a ton of Mariners, but... I really want to, I don't know, like, how much do you think Manaya will be owned? We'll, we'll talk of DK. Um, yeah, and DK, where you can pick two pitchers. 30? Um, higher? Higher, yeah, yeah, for sure higher. Uh, like 45, 50? Yeah, that makes me I like think... Mariners bats. Oh, man, like, yeah, I thought about that. Just like Mariners bats against the lefties, Mitch Haniger and... And Nelson Cruz hit lefties really, really well. Yeah. Uh, so does Healy. Like, Healy hit the home run last night for Chris. Shout out, Chris. Um, Zunino hits lefties well, but Manaya has just been so impressive. The no-hitter against the Red Sox, then seven innings, seven strikeouts against the Astros. Uh, over 13% swing strike rate in both starts. Like, the Mariners are hard to strike out, but at this point, Manaya is looking like one of the better pitchers in all of the MLB. So... You can make a case for it on a four-game slate, just taking a, a one or two off against Manaya, but I, he's not someone that I'm actively looking to target. So yeah. Tonight looks like a really good night for people that are into game theory. For sure. And these short slates are really good for that. There's concentrated ownership. Yeah. So if you think that if, there, if there's going to be a pitcher that's 60%, 70% owned, then it makes sense to look at a fade and take some bats against them. Yeah. It's just really interesting the way the pitching is lined up too because you naturally have to go to like really weird dudes. There isn't like an obvious pivot spot. Yeah. It's just kind of, I'm, I need to pivot to something, not like I need to pivot to X. Nobody's nobody's clamoring to get more Jake Odorizzi tonight. <laughs> He's just like, right. or like anybody. I mean, the whole... Like, Lopez, Odorizzi, Minor, LeBlanc, Tillman, Baria. Like, none of those guys are guys that we should really be playing in any sort of situation. No. On a full game like, slate, we'd probably ignore all six of those guys. And now they're all going to have, like, 20% ownership or higher. <laughs> I think Miner's going to be the lowest owned of the, the cheap guys. And, I, I mean, from what I've seen, he looks pretty decent. So, Red Sox, pretty bad numbers against lefties. I will probably take my chances with Miner. Uh, you think I mean, Miner's own less than Tillman? Oh, no, no. No, no one's going to play Tillman. Or no one no one should play Tillman. If if you're watching this, do not play Tillman. I mean, not even as a tournament play. He cannot miss bats. So, no Tillman. Uh, I think that's a pretty awful play. Yeah, I would agree with you wholeheartedly. It's it, well. Let's look at the crunches. We'll see how this, how murky this is. So I ran my FanDuel crunches earlier. Um, it should come as no surprise that the Red Sox are in an overwhelming amount of those lines. Uh, if we're talking pitching, because that's sort of the more interesting part of this, a uh, good bit of David Price, and then it's a split of Odorizzi and Ronaldo Lopez. Um, I think it's interesting to see that I got. 42% of the White Sox Twins game for pitching when in all actuality I'm going to need to redistribute those 42% across the other five guys outside of Price. So it's going to take some massaging for tonight. Yeah. I expect to see a lot of Boston and a lot of Angels now once I pull out the White Sox and Twins. They're going to do be you, everything. Do you like Manaya tonight? Like no. just in general? No. So I, I don't think it's a good matchup. But I, if you just want to bet on the talent, 11-2 uh, on DK. Um, I don't think he'll be the highest on pitcher. He'll probably be second behind Price. But, um, like, it's it's not a great matchup, but he's been really, really good in bad matchups the last two starts. Yeah, so, so I, end up, I have a ton of, like, he's in 50% of the lines on, that I ran on DK, him and Price. 
yeah, that's probably where I'd have him too and sort of match the field because I don't know what he's going to do. I don't want him to decide my night. Like, um, he's he's just been so good. I, I can't get over the last two starts. I'll say this much. If this were a full slate, I'd probably have none of him. I agree. Like, if this was eight games, ten games, I, you wouldn't have to think of it. But he's got such a good chance, on DK at least, of being a top two raw scoring pitcher that you may just end up needing those points. I'm going to run 100 lines on FanDuel quick with that White Sox-Twins game out just to see how it shakes out. It should go pretty quick since it's only three. Yeah, so a ton of Boston, a lot of Angels, and then Orioles as the third most popular stack for me on FanDuel, which I think is interesting. Lots of Pedro Alvarez. Lots you know, of it's Pedro. funny, uh, 40% Pedro Alvarez. I feel like if I have 40% Pedro Alvarez, I'll probably be a little bit higher than the field tonight. <laughs> I'd By say you'd be... 30%. <laughs> yeah, you'd probably be four times over the field. The Orioles are a fine stack. Like, yeah. anytime you can stack against a chalk, cheap pitcher, your lineup's going to be different, and you're going to have huge leverage on the field. And I'm assuming is going to be chalk, especially if that Twins-White Sox game is rained out. Yeah. I'm going to run it on DK. That way we can have the same sort of perspective on it. I might have to uh, bump up the exposures because three games is too short. Man, it's going to be a weird main slate. Yeah, I'm excited to chat with Chris on the mainstream. I'm sure we won't just talk about MLB. Chris will talk some basketball. I'll talk a little bit of hockey. And I'm sure we'll get on to some fast food and other fun topics like that. Did you tune into the live stream at all last night? I watched a little bit of it, yeah. Uh, I think we're going to do a three-way tonight. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't, I'm oh, not talking about sweet. the podcast. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I hope uh, you're not. But yes, um, since I don't have anything going on tonight, we might just go fill the booth up. Let's do it. Yeah, that sounds great. Um. So, yeah, a huge Boston for DK. Uh, if there's no White Sox Twins game, it's 60% Price, 60% Baria, 47% Manaya, 26% LeBlanc. One lone lineup with Chris Tillman. I think that's too much think exposure. Own... <laughs> it's too much exposure? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think there's a good chance he goes negative tonight. Oh, like, God. he's... He's so bad. He's he so is. bad. And, man, I could just see Otani and, like, Valbuena. Is, is Valbuena in your projected lineup? No. I don't know why he's not in, in mine either. So that's something to keep an eye on at least. He should be against a righty, against a bad righty. Um, but, man, I, I really think the Angels smoke him here. All right, so if you were going to grab two pitchers, who would they be? Price and... <laughs> Try, see see what Price and Manaya com comes out as. We get six of them. Um, Red Sox, Orioles, A's, Orioles. Yeah. yeah. So you can do A's with with the two A's, top Red pitchers. Sox, That's nice. But it's not yeah. really the split I would like. Yeah. Lots I of mean, Christian Vasquez if you want to do that. I like the idea if you're doing that. You're getting the two top pitchers. You get some big bats, like that that first one top left, where you're stacking against the chalk cheap pitcher as well. So you're still getting a ton of leverage on the field, even though you probably have the two highest um, owned pitchers on the slate. Yeah. No, I'm with you there. I'm happy to have Betts, Bogarts, Christian Vasquez. You know, it's not the not my favorite stack in the world. Um, yeah. I might be more likely to do... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, like J.D. Martinez, Eduardo Nunez, Christian Vasquez. Do any of these have? There's not a lot of bets. Man, it's going to be a weird night. <laughs> I'm excited for like lineups to come out for the night slate now. Uh, this is a good. Um, this is a good slate to look around the industry, see what, who everyone's talking up like. Yeah. 
because there's going to be one of these guys, these cheap guys, is going to emerge as as chalk. Whether it's minor, I doubt it's going to be minor. Whether it's Baria or Wade LeBlanc. So see who it is, and neither of them are safe bets. So I'd be trying to get some hitters against the one that's going to be super popular and consider playing the other guys because we've seen it in baseball. Things can go wrong in a hurry, especially with guys that aren't very good. So, um, For Baria, just one last thing to touch on. Uh, Fangraphs has like ratings for their pitchers. Like mm-hmm. prospect style, so they have a he has a slightly below average fastball, a slightly below average curveball, average change, and average command. So, you know, not much of a pedigree. Even if they project him out, he's more of a command guy than a K's guy. So, yeah, I've got him at under eighteen percent whiffs per swing on the season, which puts him bottom fifth in the MLB for pitchers that have thrown over a hundred pitches this year. Ooh, boy. So. He's not going to miss a lot of bats, but you you just want the innings out of him. If you're you just want five innings, three Ks, and give up a run or two. Yeah, he had like a seven K in Double A last year in sixty innings. It was just under seven Ks per nine. Um, he threw some in High A too, and it was seven point eight five. So this is a guy that was never even missing bats in the low minors. Yeah. I wouldn't expect him to come up and miss a ton here. Um, with that said, I'd probably have a bunch of him on DraftKings because of his price. Yeah. Would you rather have Baria or Mike Trout tonight? Baria or Mike Trout? Is that a serious question? Yeah, kind of. I mean, Baria's cheaper, but in theory, you should be expected no, to score I, more points. Trout. Trout. Okay. Because I think Trout homers. So okay. that's that's 16 or 14 right there on DK. Um, no, I, I mean, I'm not predicting a Trout homer, but I think he's got – as good of a chance as anyone on this slate to Homer. Um, so give me the, the great hitter and instead of the average pitcher at best. Um, yeah. Okay. What about you? Uh, probably Trout because I think Barry's ownership is going to be too high. Yeah. I wonder what Trout's going to be owned on this slate. On Probably DK, a lot, right? I would 40. think it's a lot. Yeah, maybe maybe 50, 60. I don't know. He'll be in my lineup though, so whatever. Minutes. I'm gonna be over the field. I'll have 100% Trout with my one lineup, <laughs> and just call it good. That'll work. Uh, hockey tonight. Yeah, two games once again. We've got the teams alternating, playing every other day. So we'll have Penguins, Capitals, and then we pull up the night game. I can never remember who's playing. Oh, yeah, Nashville, Winnipeg. Um, Should be good. You'll see a lot of similar players in the stacks and the spotlights. But um, those are the plays that I think are the best. Some lines have been dominant against others that will get the same matchup, but maybe haven't gotten the same results. And uh, I'm just going to keep riding them until we see the positive regression so that's where i'm at for nhl should be fun we'll be out at about three eastern the articles will be so should be fun there you go uh we've mentioned it before tomorrow on playline uh we'll be running another contest it's the awesome.com presents one million dollar perfect line bonus five thousand dollar guaranteed tourney two thousand of first we've been seeing some overlay so you know, it's a good spot to get in and try and take a shot um, at a really decent guaranteed prize pool. If you go to playline.com slash r slash awesomeo, uh, you could sign up through us. Get a free $5, you know, no questions asked. And then uh, there's also a bonus for your first deposit. You could come there, uh, pick the points, rebounds, and assists for James Harden, Anthony Davis, and Kevin Durant. And you'll play against uh, some of the awesomeo.com staff. So... It's a good good shot to try and win some money. Um, Two thousand guaranteed to first is is no joke for only a twelve hundred dollar tournament. So come check that out again. Awesome, yeah. Playline.com slash r slash awesome. Uh, I'll have NBA projections out. No, I will not be doing an NBA show today. So save your tweets. 
not happening. Um, I think that's probably it. Do you have anything else you want to add? Good luck. This slate should be fun. Concentrated ownership creates for good tournament plays uh, in theory. So, yeah, look forward to the live stream. <laughs> All righty, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Like and subscribe if you like this video, and we will talk to you again tonight. Adios, people.